In this lecture, I will discuss managers. In other words, why won't we discuss what it means to be a manager? First, what is a manager? Two, levels of managers. Three, types of managers. Four, managerial performance. Five, changing nature of managerial work. First, what is a manager? Managers, people in organizations who directly support, supervise, and help activate the work efforts and performance accomplishments of others. Also, you find them in organizations and with a wide variety of job titles like team leader, department head, supervisor, project manager, president, administrator, and more. Also, it is the manager who determines whether our social institutions serve us well or whether they squander our talents and resources. Second, levels of managers. At the highest levels of business organizations, as shown in the previous figure, we find a board of directors whose members are elected by shareholders to represent their ownership interests. In non-profit organizations, this level is often called a board of trustees, and it may be elected by local citizens, appointed by government bodies, or invited by existing members. Note that, the basic responsibilities of board members to make sure that the organization is always being well run and managed in lawful and ethical manner. Now, we are going to discuss the levels of management and we're going to start with top managers. Top managers constitute an executive team that reports to the board and is responsible for the performance of an organization as a whole or for one of its larger parts. Top managers are supposed to set strategy and lead the organization consistent with its purpose and mission. They should pay special attention to the external environment and be alert to potential long-run problems and opportunities. Note that the best top managers are strategic thinkers able to make good decisions under highly competitive and even uncertain conditions. Reporting to top managers are the middle managers who are in charge of relatively large departments or divisions consisting of several smaller work units. Examples include clinic directors in hospitals and division managers, plant managers, and regional sales managers in businesses. Note that middle managers develop and pursue action plans that implement organizational strategies to accomplish key objectives. Reporting to middle managers are the first-line managers, who are in charge of a small work group composed of non-managerial workers. The leader of an auditing team, for example, is considered a first-line manager. After finishing levels of managers, now we are going to discuss the third topic, which is types of managers. Line managers are responsible for work that makes a bad contribution to the organization's outputs. For example, 
the president and the retail manager and department supervisor a local department store all have line responsibilities their jobs in one way or another are directly related to the sales operations of the store staff managers use technical expertise to advise and support the efforts of line workers in a department store chain the corporate director of human resources and the chief financial officer would have staff responsibilities but functional managers have responsibility for a single area of activity such as finance or marketing or production or human resources or accounting or sales and general managers are responsible for activities covering many functional areas an example is a plant manager of course who oversees everything including purchasing manufacturing human resources finance and accounting note that in public or non-profit organizations managers may be called administrators for example public administrators and the city administrators after discussing the types of managers now we are going to discuss the managerial performance which is the fourth topic accountability is the requirement of one person to answer to a higher authority for performance results in his or her area of work responsibility this accountability flows upward in the traditional organizational structure as shown in figure 1.4 in the next slide the team leader is accountable to a middle manager and the middle manager is accountable to a top manager and the, even the top manager is accountable through corporate governance to a board of directors or board of trustees But what constitutes excellence in managerial performance? A good answer is that effective managers successfully help others achieve both high performance and satisfaction in their work. This dual concern for performance and satisfaction introduces quality of work life as an indicator of the overall quality of human experiences at work a high quality of work life workplace offers such things as respect fair pay safe conditions opportunities to learn and use new skills room to grow and to progress in a career and protection of individual rights and wellness changing the nature of managerial work the concept of the upside down pyramid shown in figure 1.5 fits well with the changing mindset of managerial work now look at the figure top managers keep organizations mission and the strategies clear and support team leaders and the managers who help the operating workers do their jobs and solve problems which in turn support frontline operating workers who work directly affecting customer satisfaction which in turn serve the customers and the clients the ultimate beneficiaries of the organization's efforts.
And to summarize the upside down pyramid, this view leaves no doubt that the entire organization is devoted to serving customers and that the job of managers is to support the workers who make this possible.